Hello everyone. So welcome to another video. Um, today we're going to talk about the cell cycle and how the cells divide and, and grow and, and spill it up into two and reproduce. So um, this is very relatable because when a couple of these processes go wrong, that's when we get these cancer cells, abnormal growth, abnormal cell growth. So um, it's just kind of interesting, but we're going to get very in depth. Um, maybe you remember a little bit from high school or from other college courses. And we have a lot of definitions. Okay, so stay with me. Um, we'll go ahead and start. Okay, so we got what's called somatic cells, and those are our body cells. Okay, um, soma means body, so all our body cells are somatic cells. Okay, um, so that means body cells, all cells um, except gametes. What are the gametes? The sex cells. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to talk about how all these cells are going to grow and reproduce, okay? Um, so now, cell division. So when cells need to divide, okay? Um, so cells need to divide through development as they're creating um, new organs, as their as their um, as their organisms are growing, um, all the organs in the body through growth. Growth, growth and development, um, cell replacement. So every time there's a damaged cell, we need to replace it. So we got these um, cells that need to divide to create more and more. Um, and repair. So not only to replace like our skin cells or hair cells, but also um, to repair certain cells that are damaged and that we need to get rid of because they don't work. And uh, to make gametes make sex cells so they need to split and divide to make more sex cells to have some babies later on in the future um, okay so we have what's called a karyotype okay and this is a karyotype so it's just kind of like a picture of all of your DNA divided into chromosomes okay um, so we have this uh, like one of these or a set of these is a chromosome um, we have 23 in total. We have 22 general cells, or which are called, uh, okay, so let's see a snapshot of the chromosomes. Chromosome, there it is. Okay. <clears throat> we have 23 pairs. <clears throat> so that means there are in total 46 total chromosomes, okay? Um, 1 through 22, they're called uh, autosomes or autosomal cells. And 23 um, is a uh, sex cell or sex chromosomes, sorry. And so you get a XX or XY or different combinations of that. So that's what dictates uh, gender of, of the baby or the person. Okay. <clears throat> and now we have also a couple of terms. So I'm just going to lay down a couple of these terms. So when I talk, talk about the whole process, you already know some of these words. So we got diploid and we have haploid. What is diploid? So when you say you have a diploid number of chromosomes, uh, we call it 2n, which means all of them, so 46. Okay, so this is in the body. They're also somatic cells. We talk about haploid, half, haploid is half. So we're talking about n, half, which is 23. Um, and these are our gametes. So say we're going to talk about, um, I don't know, the cell, uh, diploid cell, or diploid number of chromosomes, or after division, the haploid number of chromosomes appeared, things like that, okay? <clears throat> so now let's get into the cell cycle. Whew. Okay, this whole process, so cell cycle. Let's do this. Okay, so we got a couple of different stages. Let's see if I have a picture here first. 
There it is. Okay. So <clears throat> then I'll go back. So we have, we divide it into, there's a whole cell cycle, G1, S, G2. That's all called the interface. And then we have the M phase, which is mitosis and cytokinesis. Okay. So this is for somatics. This is for all the body cells. Okay. It's the cell cycle of all the body cells. Okay. And the process of this cell cycle, the name is called mitosis. Okay. Uh, so we can maybe add it up here. So somatic cells. Mitosis. And the gametes will be my feces. Ah, uh, just kidding. Nerd joke. Meiosis. Mitosis and meiosis. Um, okay, so we're going to talk about first interface, a couple of steps in here, and then we'll get into mitosis and uh, cytokinesis. Okay, so now let me go back. Uh, we already saw what's going on. Okay, cool. So we have the G1. G1. G is just for gap. Gap 1. <clears throat> okay, G1. Mm. So it's the primary growth phase. Okay. So all of this, let's see, have already this. Okay, so this will be easy. Interface. And it's composed of G1, which is the primary growth. G1, the primary growth phase. Why is it cell caps? Okay. This is the longest phase. Um, um, this is where the cell is doing its job. So whatever the job of that cell is, this is where they spend most of the time just doing their job, doing what they're supposed to do throughout this whole phase. Um, and then there's going to be periods of time where they have to um, get into the other phases and replicate and then making cells and stuff. But through this whole time, they're just doing their job. So when you see, look at slides, you're going to see a lot of slides in this whole interface phase. Um, just because it's always doing its job. It just stops every once in a while to, to replicate and, and do other things. Okay. Um, so then we have what's called a G1 slash S checkpoint. Okay, we're going to talk about a couple of checkpoints. Many of these checkpoints are super important because um, our cells are able to recognize if it's if it can continue and through the cell cycle or if it needs to stop and repair something. Okay, so through the G1 S checkpoint, <clears throat> they're just really checking for mutations, just making sure there aren't anything wrong going on. Uh, during G1, you got translation where we're making proteins. So checking, making sure those aren't, they are correct proteins, making sure all the bases are correct. Because we're going to make a copy of that cell. So we have the wrong bases, the wrong um, copy, then we're going to have really bad cells. Okay? So that's what G1S checkpoint is for. Now let's get to G2. <clears throat> okay. Actually, S phase. My bad. I'm getting ahead of myself. S phase. Okay. Um, this is where DNA replication occurs. And that's we're gonna talk about that in a couple of weeks. Um, so we're trying to make a copy of DNA. Okay. So the whole point of the S phase or doing replication is to make a copy of the DNA. Why? Think about this. We're gonna have one cell and we're all of a sudden gonna make two. It's gonna split in two. If you have one DNA and you split it in two, you have half and half. You don't want half and half. You want one cell with one DNA, make copies. So you have two DNAs, and when they split in two, they each have their own uh, DNA or copy of DNA. Okay, um, so that's during replications. Um, and then we have what's called sister chromatids um, attached by cohesin. Okay, so that's I'll explain that a little bit. I'll show you some images. Uh, of what sister chromatids are. So you have the chromosome, and then you have um, certain uh, one part of the chromosome. Remember, there's one, and there's from dad and from mom. Uh, one of those is going to have its sister chromatid, and then that's what it'll be used for my total. So I'll explain a little more. Just make sure you have it in here. Um, and then we have the G2 phase, and this is where organelles replicate. Okay, um, micro. 
tubules organized. Again, I'll talk about those terms in a little bit to make sure we have these in here. This is where you have homologous chromosomes. Homologous. There it is. Okay. <coughs> Um, so these homologous chromosomes are just traits. Uh, actually, um, they are chromosomes that code for um, the same trait on the same location. Okay, so those are the chromosomes that are very similar. So again, uh, we have. Let me see if I have some pictures. See if it's easier to explain in here. <clears throat> maybe this one okay um, so here's our homologous chromosomes okay um, homologous means they're the same so say mom and dad mom gives you one chromosome dad gives you one right because our sex cells is half so 22 23 46 so mom gives you the red and dad gives you the blue those are homologous chromosomes they're both number ones they're both number twos they're both number threes they're both number four they have the same gene on the same location okay they're not identical chromosomes because they're not twins but they just are coding for the same, say, the eye, say, the, the hair color. It's like that on the same exact region. Okay. Um, so now, uh, when we make copies, we have a copy of that one from mom and a copy of that one uh, from dad. Oh, get around. From dad and from mom. Those are our sister chromatids. Okay. So those are the same um, chromosomes identically the same that are put together. Why are they put together? You'll see later on in the phases where they're gonna have to split up. And that way you give to those new cells <clears throat> the one from dad and the one from mom as well on the new cells. And you're kept with the one from dad and the one from mom on your old cell. Okay. And it'll make a little more sense later on. But so homologous chromosomes are the two chromosomes from mom and dad. Uh, sister chromatids are the same ones. Um, so, going back to uh, the gap phase, uh, or the G2, we also have centrosomes, uh, replicate, um, and I'll tell you, I'll show you a picture of those little centrosomes and why they're so important, and more cell growth and organelle uh, replication, so we already put organelles replicate, okay? So that's for the whole interface um, itself. Um, to the next phase, what's important? Well, it's all important, but just uh, different stages. So now we have mitosis or the M phase. Okay. Um, again, let's put M phase so I don't confuse you. M phase includes mitosis. What's going on here? All right, cool. <clears throat> okay, so here's a couple of definitions of those of those, uh, those that we're talking about. So we have the centromere. Um, actually, I haven't really talked about the centromere, the kinetic core, um, chromatids, and the sister chromatids. Okay, so let me. I like images better. Let me see if I have a couple of pictures in here. Okay, so just the kinetic core, or just, it looks, spells like kinetic core, but the kinetic core is just this little area here um, in the middle where these microtubules are going to attach. Okay, so what's going to happen is um, these microtubules are going to grab the middle of those and then split them apart from each other. So they don't grab the outsides and make them more weird. They grab the kinetic core or the area in the middle where microtubules are going to um, attach. So maybe I should add these definitions in here in case they're in the test. Kinetic core area where uh, micro will attach. Okay. Uh, the centromere. <clears throat> centromere is uh, is a region uh, center of the chromosomes. Where they attach, 
uh, by cohesin proteins. Okay, cohesin, it's right here, cohesin proteins in the middle, and the centromere is just the middle area. Uh, so just basically making sure we have the middle and split through the middle. You don't want to split through the sides or anything like that. Make sure it's completely even and symmetrical. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, so here's a little picture of the cell. Um, see, so here's our nucleus. Um, chromatin is just uh, it's in here. Um, nuclear membrane is around. Um, so here's the centrosomes. So they're like little, little two, two rows. And those lines are like the microtubules are, that are around that I was talking about, okay? And we'll see in the phases of mitosis of how everything works. Um, okay, so let's see. Let's get to this. So there's the phases. So now we're done with all this. We're up here in the middle. Cool. Um, so we have these four, but then we add a couple of sub phases in there. Okay, so we're going to start with, uh, I think we just put the picture. There it is. So we'll start with prophase. Okay, so that's the first one. I can put numbers in here. Ah, uh, just like that. Okay, so prophase. That's the first uh, phase. So this is where um, you're gonna have your, you're gonna see the chromosomes. Okay, so first, before in this whole interface, the DNA was just this big old string, kind of like the spaghetti string. Okay, it's just in there all around. Now what's gonna happen is, in order for it to be easier to split and move around. It's gonna bundle up into like a little X, into those little chromosomes. So in prophase, you see um, the chromosomes condense and become visible. Okay, I'm sure you've seen a picture before of that, but uh, I'll, I'll try to try to see if I can. Let me try to draw it real quick. So you have your DNA, it's just like that all over the place. So you're gonna have these little proteins in the middle, like that, and then the DNA is kind of like gonna bundled up around and around and around and around and around like that and then and all of a sudden it just bundles up and then the other side bundles up and it makes an X. That's your chromosome. So instead of having this long DNA, you kind of condense it into a smaller little um, easier to manage uh, part of DNA, which is the chromosome. Okay. So let me see if I can zoom in here and take the draw out. Um, I don't want to draw anymore. The drawings are pretty bad anyway. So we look at the left, oh, you can't really see that that picture, but, um, oh, there it is. Okay, so you see um, over here the, the chromosomes, the little X's in the middle. Okay, so they're still inside the nucleus. Um, their spindle fibers are like little blue, looks like a spider. Those are the spindle fibers, those are the ones that are gonna grab them and split them up in half. Um, the nuclear envelopes, just the envelope that's surrounding the nucleus and the DNA, so it needs to break so the spindle fibers can go in. If it doesn't break, then there's no way for them to go in and grab those chromosomes, okay? Um, and the centrosomes, the little two, two rows, are gonna move to the opposite sides. You don't want them both in the middle and then just make everything there and then have a cell with double and one with nothing. So they split to the opposite sides, uh, move to the opposite sides, or are able to move everything to the other side. Okay, so let's write those things down. Um, chromosomes condense and become visible, spindle fibers emerge, um, nuclear envelope breaks down and central zones move to opposite sides. Okay, so that's our little image here. Okay, so everything's ready to prep. It's moving around. It's like, all right, we're getting there. We're getting there. Um, so on top is like cartoons, on the bottom is like real life. It's kind of cool. Um, okay, now we have what's called pro metaphase. So this is kind of like an in between prophase and metaphase. Um, <clears throat> um, it's really just prepping and making sure like everything is, is almost ready. Like you see the, see the difference, those uh, spindle fibers are really long now. They're really attaching um, to those kinetic cores inside. Um, yeah, so that's mainly it. So it's just kind of like an in-between phase. It's just, they don't think it's one or the other. It's more like in-between. Okay, so chromosomes condense or continue to condense um, kinetic cores appear and spindle fibers attach. Cool. So what's that image there? Oh, I should probably erase that. My super cool DNA. There it is. Awesome. Now, 
let's go to metaface okay now this is where it gets kind of cool look at this like real life image down here that's pretty cool i think it's pretty cool okay so the chromosomes are lined up so chromosomes line up ah, in the middle or the metaphase plate is called <clears throat> They line up kind of like in the middle, kind of like in the equator, just lining up, okay? Getting ready to, to move. What else? We have, um, so each sister chromatid is attached to the spindle fiber from the opposite. So we're already, we kind of attached to the kinetic cores, um, but now each one has its own side completely, okay? So, um, for example, Ooh. Okay, cool. See how some spindle fibers, okay, they're getting in there. Um, actually, over here. See how some are attaching to one side, some are to the other. Like, they're not fully attached. So now on metaphase, every single spindle fiber is attached to its own um, sister chromatid, okay? Okay. Um, so this one's like kind of incomplete attachment, and this one's like completely attached in the middle already ready to pull apart okay then we have an a face um, actually in be here um, but af right after metaphase there's like a little checkpoint M checkpoint called just to make sure that we have everything ready to continue going before we split it up okay so that's that checkpoint um, so now an anaphase uh, central mirrors split in two <clears throat> Sister chromatids are pulled apart or towards opposite poles. Okay, and uh, so elongate. Okay, so here it is, anaphase. So right here, um, you see now you have your own sister chromatids. So that's why we made copies. Okay, imagine you have mom and dad, and then all of a sudden you just split them up. And now you have moms on one cell and dads on the other cell. No, you want copies of each one in here. Okay, so let's say this is one and one moms and dads one one, two and two and three. This is just simplifying, but it's a lot of chromosomes. Okay, well, it's 23 pairs, so um, this is just our simple version. We just put a couple in there. So you see the cell begins to get larger and larger, or in order for each one to have its own. Um, yeah, they're pulled apart. Chromatids are pulled apart to opposite sides. Okay, and we're almost done. We have what's called a uh, telophase. Okay, um, so in that telophase, <clears throat> chromosomes arrive at opposite poles and begin to condense. Okay, so now I uh, remember we were in X's here, so they're like, okay, now everything's bundling up. Now each, they're kind of like on their own side. Now you got this envelope starting to build around those chromosomes. Um, the spindle fibers are gonna like break down, kind of, and just just make sure it's, everything's ready again to go to kind of have back to this image over here. Okay, so we're trying to get back to square one to its own functional cell. Okay, uh, so we can put a nuclear envelope um, begins to form as well. <clears throat> face <clears throat> uh, metallic or spindle fibers break down cool. okay. and the last one or kind of like a sub phase is a uh, cytokinesis okay um, they just um, why they separate it is they say so in telophase you still have kind of like the whole cell so it's kind of like the separation of the two and the building of the, the envelope or the membrane around the nucleus um, and on cytokinesis you're kind of splitting the cell in two so that's like cell splitting in two already okay um, so cell splitting in animal cells you do what's called what well, we do what's called a uh, cleavage furrow so kind of like a, it's a different splitting in plant cells. 
um, they have what's called a, a cell plate. Okay, let's see if I have an image here. Um, somewhere in here. But, um, let's see. Well, probably somewhere. There it is. So it's kind of like a cleavage furrow like that. Um, that's kind of like a string in the middle and like splits them up in two. Okay. Um, and that cell plate is just kind of like the wall in between and you create the cell wall in the middle and then, and then it just reattaches, unattaches, okay, or deattaches. All right, um, so that's for that. Just a couple of review. Um, any of that. So just remember those checkpoints, check for mistakes, um, make sure it's ready to divide, and the M1, just make sure everything's attached correctly and, and lined up in the middle. Um, here's our the whole thing, and here are the three checkpoints, the G1, the G2, and uh, the spin or the M checkpoint. Make sure everything's ready. Um, okay. An example of cancer, uncontrolled growth of these cells. So we've read the cell can't control the cell cycle or, or the checkpoints are wrong or anything happens. We have abnormal or wrong or not functional cells, correctly functional cells. So then you got these cells that keep growing and growing and growing and growing. That's when we get cancer cells. They can divide indefinitely. Okay. Um, so we got some tumor suppressor genes. We don't need to know that. But yep, that'll be all for mitosis. Now I'll upload another video of meiosis.